I first started video at the University of Wisconsin, Madison, and I immediately had a visceral reaction. It was almost like the first time I remember trying on a suit when I was 12 years old in a three-way mirror, seeing the side of my face and my profile, and it was sort of distancing and, and sort of oddly magnetic. Then when I moved to LA in 1970, I started doing the reels where I worked for a whole year every day, but at the end of the year I would go through and weed out and then come out with like a 20 minute selection. I never really looked through the camera. I arranged the monitor, the camera, and myself a sort of triangle that made it more of a performance for myself. I could see what I was doing and modify it from there. No, way off. Your, written, your whole timing is off. You did hit yourself in the right place. But Usually the second take was the one that was the good one because the first one I was thinking about what to do. The second one I thought of what to do. The third one was overdone. I don't think that other artists that used video at that time were so interested in the audience. It tended to be just using the whole reel, like 30 minutes of jumping up and down or, or whatever. And that was really different from television which had 30 second ads. They had a way in and way out, so I work sort of more like that, I suppose. Now we have another boot that we hope will catch on. It's, it's a white boot with a steel reinforcing and the sole for added light. I never made scripts. I always just sat down and started to babble on. One of the, the ways that I edited it, I would test it out on friends or technicians, which I found to be really a great audience because if they stopped looking at their wavelengths, then I knew that it was communicating. Oh, Laughter was one response where you know that they got it. Mom, I think Randy's gonna be sick. Crooked finger, crooked stick. It's my favorite one of all time without a dog. Wow, neat finger. Boy, is that crooked. Oh, that's nothing. You ought to see my stick. Wow, is that neat. I don't know how I thought of that. I think it's really about showing off, like one-upmanship, and with the stupidest things possible, like the finger and the stick. It came into the art world at a time when, especially in video, people were making statements. I've never been one to comment. I just wanted to be flat. That, that I thought was really significant and important. My heroes at the time were Bob and Ray, the comedians I just adored, and the writer Borges uh, with his use of circular time. Those things appealed to me. And, and also I should mention Glenn Gould, whose idea about recording rather than performing to a public was really interesting to me when I was performing. I never could have anyone in, in the room at all. You know, and that's why my dog worked out so well because he wasn't too concerned about me sounding stupid. When I got Man Ray, I had no intention of using him. He was six weeks old when I got him. I brought him to my studio when I was just starting to do the video in LA. And I uh, was always really interested when I was trying to figure out how to hook the stuff up. And he, he seemed to get this really weird attachment to the microphone. It's almost like a bone. So in one video, I threw it to him and he retrieved it, made this horrendous sound. So he was always helping me think of stuff to do, and it was really my art partner. There was something really scary about sitting in a room with a video camera staring at you with a monitor and you can't think of anything. My best video, I remember, spelling lesson happened after feeling that way for about two hours. And then I just, Sat down next to Man Ray and this thing came out. Spelled uh, O-U-T right, but when it came to beach, you spelt it B-E-E-C-H, which is like the, uh, well, there's a gum called beach nut gum. So if I had given up, that wouldn't have existed. I was really kind of grateful that I had the stamina to, to stay with it. The funniest one was Man Ray with the alarm clock where he's in bed like a human sleeping and the alarm clock's ticking away violently on top of him. And when the alarm goes off, he blasts out of bed. And I did that years later. The alarm goes off and he looks at it and goes back to sleep. I think that was the funniest two-part piece that I, that I made. I think the longest one was that milk 
treat bottle one where the Man Ray is trying to get a, a milk bone out of a glass bottle and he bangs it around all over the place. And the glass bottle breaks and there's this milk bone inside of this broken glass. And you see the camera go up for a second. And when I thought, oh, I gotta stop this. But then I felt, no, he deserves, he deserves it and gets the bone out then chews it right next to the microphone and the broken glass. It's really upsetting, but it's also triumphant in a way. Every year something kind of changed where I would upgrade the equipment by reel two and three. I'm, I got a better microphone, so I'm talking more. Please excuse my shaky handwriting. And then by reel eight, it switched to color and there were people in it. But I think the first ones are just as strong, if not stronger. So I learned to really distrust like technological advancements. Get out. The first wave of these reels ended in 77. And then more than 20 years later, I don't know, I started to make reel eight. And after reel nine, I thought, well, here comes reel 10, 11, and 12. But no, nothing. So I gotta wait another 20 years to start those.